Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So in the previous video, we were able to generate the timing in order to drive a virtual VGA monitor. And just a reminder, just because we're doing this in simulation doesn't mean it doesn't work on the FPGA. We just need to output these signals to the PMOD on the FPGA that has a little HDMI chip and it can drive an HDMI monitor or a VGA monitor if you have the VGA PMOD. And the timings are the same for both, as far as I understand. So either should work, and it just depends on which one you have. So in the previous episode, we got the timing working, and we were able to generate a test pattern, and it looks like it's working. So let's try and render text. The First thing I'd like to do is extract out a module for this. And we got an embedded circuit. Let's name it, let's name it VGA sync. Let's paste our circuit in here. We got our clock, we've got our sinks. One thing that might be ideal is to know whether or not we're in the blanking area. So we can easily set up some logic for that. And like I said, it's a unsigned operation and we just detect if it's less than 640. Oops, wrong place. Just going to call this um, valid, maybe, or hmm, pick so we know we're in the picture area. I don't know. Can change it later. Okay. Let's put the sync pulses up at the top. Okay. Seems to work. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Still works, great. Okay, so looking at this, what would be ideal is to break this down into a grid. So then we can have individual characters placed anywhere on this grid. So one way to do that is to say, okay, so we're gonna have a 16 by 32 sized cell, and we're gonna have a grid of those that fills the picture area. And inside each one of those cells, then there can be a character. And that character would then be looked up in a character ROM. And the pixels in that ROM will be drawn on the screen, if that makes sense. So how would we do that? Well, it would be nice to have a module that splits the X and Y coordinates into what we need to figure out which character we're at and where in that character we are, right? So let's start working on that. So I'm gonna call this module the VGA character position. So let's see here. We just need some splitters to figure this out, I think. So input splitting would be 16, but then output, what do we put here? Well, um, if we have 640 for our X coordinate, then that will fit into eight bits. And in fact, even if we have 1280 as our X coordinate, that still fits in eight bits, because that's just 80. So I think we can do that. So then we'd have um, a character, which is a grid of 16, which is four bits, and the coordinate on the screen 
that that cell is or that character is will be 8 bits. And we can do the same for the Y, but for the Y, I want 32, so it'll be 5 bits. Okay, that's easy enough. So let's call this. Um, so we have the coordinates inside the character, and we have the character position. So inside the character, what do we call it? Um, well, we could call it just call for column. And then we can have row for the row that it's in. And then we would have uh, X and Y coordinates for the which character. So we can call this CX and this is bits and CY. So hmm. in the prototype, this circuit was a heck of a lot more complicated than this, but I think this is actually all we need. So I'm just going to run with it. This, by the way, is why you do prototypes, because you often think of a much simpler way to do it the next time that you implement it. So that's good. This is way simpler. Okay, so we've got this circuit. Let's order the inputs and outputs here. I think that's actually fine. There we go. That looks roughly correct. There's a little oddness over here, but hopefully that's not a problem. So the next thing we need is a way of looking up the characters. So we need a character ROM to look up the pixel values. So instead of implementing all of ASCII, which is uh, seven bits, I'm going to implement just six bits. And that's to save ROM space, since these ROMs are fairly expensive. There's 32 rows, which is five bits. So it's six plus five, which is 11 bits. So that's why it's a bit expensive. If we add another bit, then it doubles the number of ROM space that we need, which, yeah. So we're going to try and avoid that. So I'm going to call it the VGA text module. So the character input will be 16 bits wide. That's because it has both the color information as well as which character it is. So the character will be in ASCII, which is just seven bits. And then that leaves nine bits for the color, which is three bits for red, green, and blue, which is pretty nice. That's, I think, 512 colors, so not bad. So I said I only want six bits for the character, which is just the uppercase letters. We don't have any lowercase letters, but that should be fine. But we end up with 32 non-printable characters at the beginning of the ASCII character set. So let's just subtract those out so we don't have to store those. So now we want to know if it's a valid character or not, and it's invalid if it carries. So if we subtract 32 and it becomes negative, then the carry bit will be set, and we want to ignore it then. Now, there's also another issue. If we send an uppercase letter, what will happen is it won't carry 
but then we strip off the upper bit and it wraps around back to zero. So if we try and use lowercase letters, we're gonna get the wrong output from this. But I consider that user error. We know we don't have up, uh, lowercase letters, so don't try that. So I'm not gonna handle that case. I'm just gonna handle the case where it is less than 32 because that comes up with zero actually. So I do wanna handle that case so that zero maps to the space, which is what we want. So what we do next is we calculate the address in our character ROM for the current set of 16 pixels. So CA is going to be our character address for the character ROM, and it's 11 bits. So then we need to read those bits. So we get a data input, and it's 16 bits for the 16 pixels, and this will be our character data. But there's one slight complication here in that the ROM itself is going to take a cycle to read. So we're going to have to delay our sync pulses by a cycle. And in fact, we want to delay the position information by a cycle as well. So we'll have to factor that in in a moment. And we'll just do that by pipelining it, which means just adding a bunch of registers to delay the outputs by a clock cycle. So then what do we do with the character data? Well, it's a bit for each pixel and we know which pixel we're in with this column here. So let's figure that out. So we get our character data in and then we can figure out the column from that. And we simply use a multiplexer to figure out which bit we want to pay attention to. So then you might be wondering why these are backwards. Well, it's because the font I chose does the bits in the opposite order from kind of what's natural. So I'm just swapping the bits around. So then we've got our output here. This tells us whether or not the current pixel is on or off. So... We have another input. We need to know whether or not we're in the picture area. So pick, and we need to display a color. So what I'm gonna do is set up a multiplexer. And I'm gonna say, if we are displaying a pixel, actually, I just thought of a better way to do this. We just need an AND gate. That's much simpler. So if we are displaying a pixel and we're in the picture area, then we display the color. So that's it. So our colors are nine bits. And we're just going to display nothing if we are not displaying a pixel. I just had a thought. What if we had the color information separate? Hmm. How about we do that? So we're just going to have seven bits of character. And this simplifies things quite a bit. Again, it's good to do prototypes because you have better ideas the second time around. Uh, okay, so then we have our foreground color and actually then we don't we're not limited to nine bits we could be um four bits so 12 bits for color um yeah we have foreground and we have background so we have then a few different options so i'm gonna revert this So if we're in the picture area, then 
we want to display things. If we're not in the picture area, we want to put zero. This is important because some monitors will expect that when you're in the blanking area, you emit a zero. Digital doesn't care about that fact, but some monitors do. So if you don't emit a zero in the blanking area, you can have problems. So I'm going to do that. And then we need just our foreground and background colors, really. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to add our registers for the various signals just to give the character ROM a cycle to load the value. So of course we need a clock for all of these registers. So let's rig that up. All right, seems like it's working. Let's wire it up. So the FPGA block RAM, which will be our character ROM, is registered. So that's why I'm adding a register after it to ensure that the timing is correct in simulation. And this should be boiled down to just a block RAM in the FPGA. So here we go. Let's just uh, hard code which character for now. So that's not quite what I was expecting. I think we have our foreground and background color backwards. So there's that. That's sort of better, but what's the deal with the black bars? Hmm. And also we can, I don't know if it, it'll show up on the video, but there's a little bit of space up at the top here. So we're off. Let's see if we can figure out why we're off. Just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if we flip the front porch and back porch around. Oh, that's better. That's much better. That looks exactly right. Perfect. Excellent. 
So we have our characters being generated. We are able to generate the X and Y position of a character and we can output that. Actually, that might be interesting. Let's try that. Not quite what I was expecting. Or the character. Maybe we swap these around. Hmm. Oh, I know. There we go. So there we have it. We have a circuit that's able to generate a VGA signal and we have our characters being generated. So we have a character lookup ROM and we have nice multicolored text. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.